morning, good morning, Grace Baptist, to the church, to those on the Facebook line, Facebook Live, those on the prayer line, good morning. Yet again, another day's blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Come on, y'all, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. If you're just glad to be in the house one more time, Almighty good God, we serve. He went all the way to hell just to save us. So we ought to be able to do something every time we, the door of the house of the Lord is open. For the word said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his holy courts with praise. We ought to have a high praise. Even though it ain't for the few of us, we ought to have a high praise. We're going to open up this morning with our marvelous praise and worship team. And we're going to open up with a couple of songs. And then we're going to have a prayer. Amen.
I have you for our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. We come to you this morning, Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts. Because, Lord, you watched over us last night as we slept. Protect us from all harm, thank you, that might be around us. May you bless us this morning to open our eyes, Lord, to witness another day, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask you this morning to come down with this. That your Holy Spirit will direct us in this service, Lord. We will require to sing your praise for Lord. And be with the one, Lord, that pray for your word, Lord. Oh, Lord, realize in times like these, we need you, Lord. Because so many things have happened in this world today, Lord. The only solution that we have, Lord, is you, Lord. Lord, we pray this morning for those who are sick and shut in, Lord. We know that you have hidden power in your memory that you can heal with your will, Lord. Be with Brother Gibson this morning, Lord. We pray for him, Lord. We pray for Sister Anna Otis, Lord. We say, pray for Sister Bell, Lord.
uh, for our Bible study where we'll have our regular Lord's Supper. Amen? Amen. With that, we're going to have our praise team come back with another song. And Brother Robert will take a look.
present with us on this morning. And we want uh, the First Baptist members to know that you are missed Amen. here this morning. We welcome all our visitors who are tuned in with us on Facebook Live. And we pray that you will continue to pray for our church as well as other churches that stand open in the name of Jesus. There is a word this morning that we want to lift up. I think it might be relative to what we are dealing with in this world today. It's found in 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're entertaining one, one verse. It reads, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I'm going to say that one more time. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And of a sound mind. Amen. Thank you for standing for the reading of the Word of God. This morning, I just want to preach to us on the subject fear don't live here anymore. Right now. Fear don't live here anymore. The story is told about a little boy. Mother asked him to get the broom off, the, off of the back porch. Right. The little boy was reluctant because he was afraid of the dark. He told his mom, I would get the broom, but I'm afraid. All right. The mama said, God is everywhere, and he's already on the back porch. Right. The little boy opened the book, and he opened up the door just a little, and he said, God, since you're out there, would you please hand me the broom? Right. Brothers and sisters, I think it's safe to say that this little boy was afraid. I also believe that many of us are dealing with the same fear, fearful like symptoms. Because these are frightening times. People are afraid. And I don't care how super spiritual you think you are. We all are dealing with some fearful moments. This, if I can call her, this Corona the, the shade the virus. What you say now? Is a enemy we've never seen before, and I believe that that we can be Christians and still be responsible and cautious at the same time. I believe, Brother Martin, that, that God gives all of us common sense. And, and this virus that, that has cascaded through our land should be respected. I believe that, that we should not be gallivanting around the world as though it does not exist. We ought to be concerned. I think we ought to be concerned, Brother Roger, about social distancing. I believe we ought to be concerned about our elderly, particularly those who are 60 plus. I believe we ought to be concerned and cautious of our loved ones. And we should exercise proper appropriate hygiene. Right. I believe that, that we should 
Wash our hands. And watch who we, who we interact with. God wants us to be concerned. And God wants us to be cautious. But God does not want us to be fearful. Because fearful is when the situation is controlling you. And you are no longer controlling the situation. Fear dictates your thoughts. Fear dictates your emotions. Fear will dictate your faith. Fear, fear will tell you that, that you're not going to sleep tonight. Fear will have you panicking, being paranoid, and popping pills. Do I have a witness? Yes, we ought to be cautious. As of today, 25,700 cases around the country. 323 deaths in the U.S. Italy has 53,578 cases. 4,824 deaths. Do I have a witness? Just on yesterday, Italy lost 800 people in one day. Yes, we ought to be cautious. But as children of God, we cannot be fearful. Do I have a witness? It, it is said, it is said that, 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 that fear has two acronyms. And, and it depends on how you respond to each one. The first one says fear stands for forget everything wrong. The second one stands for face everything and rise. I choose the second one. I choose the second one because I still believe that God does not want me to live in fear. Now understand this, brothers and sisters, understand because I'm not saying all fear is bad. In fact, in fact, the Bible would tell us that that to fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. There are there are still, Sister Hamilton, some some legitimate fears that we all will encounter. As, as long as there are some snakes, I'm gonna be fearful. Yeah. Nobody ought to hit me here. As long as there are spiders and and for some of us dogs, that that we are going to still have some phobias. In our life, but 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 it becomes a problem when fear robs you of your joy and your peace. Do I have a witness? And I wish I had a few folks out there in Facebook land and those who are here today that they can testify with me that that you will not let this steal your joy nor steal your peace. Do I have a witness that that when fear knocks on the door? You will let faith answer and tell fear that he's not welcome. Because if it's, if it's two things you're going to need during this crisis, if it's two things that you're going to need that's going to help you through this, you're going to need joy and you're going to need some peace. You're going to need the joy of the Lord. And you're going to need a peace that surpasses your understanding. And I'm just looking for a few believers that still got that joy in that peace that, that the joy you have, the world did not give it to you. And if the world didn't give it to you, the world cannot take it away. Don't, don't let Corona V steal your joy. Don't let Corona V steal your peace. That you got the joy of the Lord. That even though we are surrounded by a virus, we are surrounded by sickness. We are still satisfied with the Savior. Do I have a witness that, that, that you tell Corona V that while the world is panicking, you are still going to be praised? Can I get this right? While the world is getting all the toilet tissue, you are still be trusting in the Lord. No matter what you go through, we've got to learn how to keep our joy in our peace. Am I talking to anybody here? Just type amen if you want. 
want to, that no matter what's going on in this world, you still going to have joy and you still going to have no peace. Say that. Say that. Say that. I believe, Brother Martin, this is what Paul is trying to, to convey to Timothy. Right. That, that fear don't live here anymore. Yeah. He's writing to Timothy because Timothy was operating in the spirit of fear. Paul calls fear a spirit. When we are possessed with the spirit of fear, you can be sure that the devil is involved somewhere. The devil wants you to, to display a lack of trust in God. And to put your trust in what you see. Yeah. This is why we have to let, at this time of crisis, our sixth sense kick in. Mm -hmm. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah, right. Can I get with this? Yeah. See, see, we got to understand something, brothers and sisters. And that is, God is in control of this world. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and no matter what, Brothers and sisters, God ain't playing with us. Amen. Do I have a witness? Amen. Somebody that may, may be asking where did this come from? And how did this happen? And what what how did all this take place? And even your president of the United States is blaming it on China, but maybe it didn't come from China. Maybe it came from God. All right. Do I have a witness? Right. Maybe, maybe, maybe the devil, the devil is doing it, but God approved it. All right. Do I have a witness? And too many people are, are counting on the wrong things and, 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 and throughout the years that we have went off and left God and forgot the God that has brought us to where we are and we are counting on things and forgotten about God. Amen. Do I have a witness? Mm -hmm. and God, God said, you've been counting on your money. Well, you know what? God said, I shut down your money. Amen. You've been counting on your job. God said, you know what? I shut down your job. You've been counting on your education. God said, you know what? I'll shut down your education. Can I get a witness? You, you've been counting on clubbing and night street. He said, you know what? I'll shut down your club. God ain't playing with us. Ain't playing. Do I have a witness? Yes, sir. And so he, he tells, he tells, he tells Timothy. He says, he says, Timothy, Timothy, you, you cannot be fearful. Mm. Timothy was dealing with some, some challenges in his church. And, and Paul wanted him uh, to know from whence he came from. Yeah, well. Paul says to him, you ought to read this chapter at your leisure. You got no time now. So you ought to read it. You ought to read it. <laughs> Paul, Paul tells him, Paul tells him, he said, he said, I know your stock. I know your pedigree. I know where you came from. I knew your grandmother Lois and your mother Enos. I, I know where you came from. Paul even tells Timothy in this particular chapter, he said, I laid hands on you. Yeah. Do I have a witness? In other words, he said, I know what's in you, and Timothy, what's in you can overcome what's around you. Right. Help me here. Oh, yes. And somebody needs to hear that, and that is what's in you, you can overcome it. Yes. Or what's around you. Mm -hmm. So wash your hands. Mm. Practice social distancing. Yeah. Turn your light off and go to sleep. Yeah. Because what's in you yeah. will help you overcome. What's around you? Yeah. Let, let me try this section here. I got one person on this section. Listen, what's in you can help overcome what's around you. Am I talking to anybody out of the faith based world that, that can testify with me that what's in you can help overcome what's around you? Do I have a witness? And so, so he tells he tells Timothy, he tells him, Sister Renita, he, he tells him, he says, he says, what you need to do, you need to stir up the gift. So he tells him, he says, stir up the gift that, that's in you. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if you look at this word, stir up, stir up means to rekindle the fire. Right. Do I have a witness? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the longer you stay away from God in some areas in your life, your fire will die out. All right. And so Paul is telling Timothy that he needs to, to rekindle his, his fire. Okay, they think I'm not kidding you. If, 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 you, if you have ever sat by a campfire, sometimes the fire would die. Mm -hmm. and, and if you wanted, uh, you 
one of them lied to, 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 to have the fire be bright again. You had to throw in some more wood. Mm -hmm. Do I have a witness? Yes, That's what Paul is, is telling Timothy. He said, your, 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 your fear is, is killing your fire. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you're going you gonna to make it, you got to throw in some more wood. Yeah. Do I have a witness? Oh, you say, well, Pastor, I don't have no spiritual wood. Oh, yes, you do. You got it all in the book of Psalms. Let me give you some wood. Psalms 121 said, I lift up my eyes. So the heels from this coming all of my help. My help comes from the Lord. I feel like preaching in here. I give you some more little song. 23 says, No, you know, you ain't gonna walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll fear no evil, for God is with y'all. ain't gonna help me. I give you some more words in Psalm 27. He said, The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I feel? The Lord is the strength of my life. To whom shall I be afraid? I, I give you some more words. Psalm 37. I've been young and I've been old, but I ain't ever seen the righteous forsaken, but she begging for pain. I give you some more words. Psalm 30. We can't do it for a night, but joy don't come in the morning. I give you some more words. Lift your head when you get to be lifted up in everlasting marriage. Throw us 
in the fire. But we know God is able. And then he told them, but even if he don't deliver us, we still know that he's able. It's that same power that Peter had on the day of Pentecost mm -hmm. when he stood up and preached a profound prophetic message and 3,000 souls were saved at one time. It's that same power that Peter and John displayed when they told Peter and John, don't you dare open your mouth and speak about the name of Jesus. But Peter and John said, we can't help but to speak on the things we have seen and heard. If you're going to make it through these times, it's going to take courage. Yeah, yeah. You can't fight this virus, this pandemic on your own. Mm -hmm. You're going to need some power. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? And, and the good news is, is what you need, you can't buy at the grocery store. Do I have a witness? You can stand in line at H-E-B all you want, but you can't get this power. Do I have a witness? Yeah, on the tissue line. You, you can't get this power in the water section. It, it doesn't matter what H-E-B Kroger. It don't matter what store you go to. You cannot get this power. Do I have a witness? That, 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 that you can fight over the tissue and the water and the meat all you want. Because the answer is not in the grocery store. The answer is with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I have a witness? That's why Paul said it's given. We don't have to work for it. Right. We don't have to fight for it. We, we, we don't have to, we can't produce it. And, and Paul said it was given to us. In other words, God gave us everything we need for such a time like this. It was given to us. This is a good place to throw this in the gumbo while I'm standing over the pot. Because courage and wisdom are not in conflict with one another. All right. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't postpone Sunday morning worship uh, because I don't have courage. Mm -hmm. I postponed it because I have wisdom. All right now. God will help me All here. All right now. See, this is the difference between having faith and being foolish. Mm. <laughs> Preach I'm trying. Right. It is the difference between being spiritual and being stubborn. Mm. I, I'd rather you be at home well. Than to be sick at church. Amen. Tell me the witness Because I don't care how super spiritual you are, it's still God that you pray and prosper and be in good health. Amen. It's hard to be effective in ministry with a healthy spirit but a sick body. My Lord. You, you can't help the body of Christ in the cross stand with cold symptoms. Mm. Preach pastor. It doesn't matter how holy your hands are if they haven't been washed. Preach, I'm trying to preach. Understand that courage and common sense ain't mad at each other. I'm going to help you preach. So don't treat them like enemies who need to be reconciled. It's, it's all right to be covered by the blood of Jesus and still be covered by your insurance. Right now. I'm going to help you preach at the end of the day. Yes, but don't, don't, don't let folk tell you that, that just because your church counsels their service don't mean that you don't have courage. Mm -hmm. You tell them that you're being cautious. Mm -hmm. See, you can have faith and common sense at the same time. Y'all mm -hmm. gonna help me here? Mm -hmm. See, I have faith in God, mm -hmm. but I still wear my seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> I have faith in God, but when I'm sick, I still go to the doctor. Amen. Like they said, I, I have faith in God, but when He scribbles down on the prescription man, I still go take my medicine. Amen. But I, this, I, I have faith in God, but when I go to bed, I check my locks Amen. and make sure the locks are locked at the house. Do I have a witness? Amen. See, it's the difference between having faith and being foolish. Can I get a witness? You, you gotta have courage. Sometimes you gotta use your head for more than a hat rack. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, it's okay to be prayerful, okay. but you also got to be practical. Yes. You got to have courage. <laughs> but then secondly, we can face fear through compassion. Paul says, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but power and love. The word love here 
Brothers and sisters, it's a Greek word. It, it means a God. It's a God kind of love. And Paul tells Timothy that you can deal with fear when you have possessed the love of God. Mm -hmm. I understand that this love does not refer to my love for God. Because my love for God is inconsistent. But this, this love is a love that, that refers to God's love for us. All right. Do I have witness? And what, what Paul is suggesting, brothers and sisters, is that we don't have to fear anything because of God's love for us. Not only do we have his power to fight fear, but we have his love to face you. Right. Understand, God's love for us is not a love that always exempts us from trials. Mm -hmm. But he loves us to see us through the trials. Right. Yeah. If God will bring us to it, right now. God will bring us through it. Amen. Do you want to know why we're going to make it? Let me tell you why. It's, it's not a very difficult answer. Go ahead now. But we're going to make it through this because God is in love with us. Do I have a witness? And because He loves me, and because He loves you, everything going to be all right. Paul said it like this Who shall separate me from the love of God? I wish I had some biblical folk. Shall tribulation? Shall distress, shall, shall persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or spoil? I'd like to add one more. I'd like to add one more. Shall coronavirus separate us from the love of God? If coronavirus was going to take me out, who she should have took me out before I found out that I was in love with God and that God was in love with me? Say that. Do I have a witness? Look at somebody and say, He's in love with me. Do I have a witness? And you gotta walk out of here today. You gotta turn your phone off today, knowing that no matter what goes on in this world, God is still in love with you. Amen. And sometimes it goes back even to when we were a child. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Why right? I know He loves me because the Bible tells me so. Y'all gonna help me preach? If nothing else could help, love lifts me. God loves. Because he loves us, everything's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Let's go home here. Go ahead now. We can face this fear with courage. We can face this fear with his compassion. But we can also face this fear with his control. All right. Paul tells Timothy, God gave you power, he gave you love, and he gave you a sound mind. Mm. This, this word sound means healthy. It means to be whole. A deeper, a deeper meaning is self-control. Mm -hmm. This is this is why when a person writes a will of the testament, he says, I, Pastor Bell, being of my sound mind. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm sound. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm intact. I'm competent. I, I, I know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Do I know what you're saying? That, 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 that this mind that's in me is in Christ Jesus. Amen. In other words, I know what I'm doing. In other words, ain't nothing wrong with me. All right. God, Paul tells Timothy that the very thing that he gave you was a sound mind. And, and God gave you that sound mind. And understand that, that what God gave you lets you know ain't nothing wrong with you. All right, man. Right. You'll have a witness. Not, not a world. Yes, the world would, would make us think that we lost our mind mm -hmm. when, when we go around and still say God is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the world would, would, would think that something's wrong with us mm -hmm. when, when, when we can see this virus. That, that, that's that's, that's in, in, enforcing himself on all of our lives and we still say he's still worthy to be praised. 
The world will think something wrong with us when we see cases and cases add up of people with coronavirus and we still say, I'll bless the Lord at all times. And this praise shall continue to be in the world will think something wrong when we say, uh, the Lord kills and the Lord takes away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. The world will think you have lost your mind when you say, oh, he slain me, yet will I trust in him. But you got to tell the world, no, God didn't give me uh, a crazy mind. God gave me a sound mind. And when I still put my trust in him, when all hell has broken loose, ain't nothing wrong with me. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm doing. Oh, yes, I can still preach to 10 people in the congregation. I can still preach to a camera because my mind is sound. That when I woke up this morning, my mind was on Jesus because God gave me a sound mind. You know how you want to justify yes, sir. That, that if it wasn't for God, you would have lost your mind. A long time ago. That, that when you see all the habit My that's going on, I thank God that he gave me a sound mind. That, that no matter what's going on in the grocery store, it doesn't matter what's going on in the White House, I can still turn my light on and come on to sleep. Somebody say, well, Bill, I can't do sleep at a time like this because I got a sound mind. When they look at somebody and say, I know what's going on. I know the God I serve. I feel like I'm in the air. He's worthy to be. To be prayed. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Do I have a witness? Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with me. Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with me. They, they, they ask them guys on the day of Pentecost, we men been drinking wine. He said, no, I ain't been drinking wine. I've been still.
you can still give Christ your life. These are some trying times. These are some, some perilous times we're living in. And you need a Savior that can rock and create you to sleep at night. That when you wake up, you can say, For me to live is Christ. But if I die, it's not okay.
Jesus is the best. 